as a young boy, I learned about a game played in the streets of New York City, a game you could not win. The game is called Three Card Monty. A variation of the shell game, it works by distracting the mark while you play with the cards. Something very similar appears to be happening with a WHO agreement. See, just as the Monty dealer cries out, watch the lady, keep track of the lady, people today are crying, if Joe Biden signs this agreement, American sovereignty will end. Nothing any president can do can take away your sovereignty. Sadly, most Americans have voluntarily given up their sovereignty by falling for the lies that the president can do things via international agreement that he cannot do under the Constitution. Let's picture a future where some American president has signed the WHO pandemic agreement and the international health regulations, and the Senate has ratified these treaties. What happens then? First, since these treaties were not made under the authority of the United States, they are not the supreme law of the land. Further, the signing of these treaties would be an unconstitutional act. As the Supreme Court confirmed in the case Norton v. Shelby County, an unconstitutional act is not a law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties. It affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation as an operative as though it had never been passed. Then again, since members of Congress seem almost universally ignorant of the document they took an oath to support, I'm sure the vast majority would think these false treaties valid. However, any legislative acts made in support of these fake treaties would not be constitutional and therefore void, as Alexander Hamilton said in Federal 78. There is no position which depends on clearer principles than that every act of a delegated authority, contrary to the tenor of the commission under which it is exercised, is void. No legislative act, therefore, contrary to the Constitution, can be valid. To deny this would be to affirm that the deputy is greater than his principal, that the servant is above his master, that the representatives of the people are superior to the people themselves, that men, acting by virtue of powers, may do not only what their powers do not authorize, but what they forbid. Since neither the President nor Congress is likely to recognize the criminal activities they were committing, many would look to the courts to protect us. Since these justices went to the same law schools that refused to teach the supreme law of the land, can we really expect protection from this branch of government? A quick look at the Supremacy Clause should show you not only that the decisions of a court is not part of the supreme law of the land, but that the judges are bound to the Constitution, not the other way around. Of course, that will not stop those in government at all levels from turning their back on their oaths of office and attempting to place free citizens under the thumb of these tyrannical treaties, which leaves us with one way to protect our rights and where we should have started in the first place, with we the people.